I hope you're all feeling warmed up by now. Um, I want to start with this question that has been driving me throughout my whole career for the past 20 years, and that is that question, what makes some organizations, some brands and some businesses extraordinary? I mean, how do they capture our attention, our imagination in ways that others don't? How can we have so many mediocre, so many boring brands and businesses in this world? And I've been privileged for the last 10 years to work as an entrepreneur, as a strategist, with some top organizations, and not so top ones as well, but with about 100 organizations, and, and I've been really fortunate to work very hands-on with them throughout all levels of the organizations, so from board level, but mainly with leadership teams, but also with front-end and middle management. So I've really gotten to know sort of what doesn't work and what works on a practical level. And I want to make a promise to you. I'm going to share with you some really simple, not easy necessarily, but some very simple principles and ideas that I promise to you, if you go back and work with them and implement them, you can transform your whole business. And it won't even necessarily take that long. So I want to start by sharing with you the most common reason that companies fail, in my experience, in my humble experience, but I've seen a lot. And the number one reason is, is not perhaps as you'd think, that companies pursue the wrong strategy and they fail. The most common reason is that companies pursue no strategy at all. Can you believe it? And, and so let me open up what I mean by that. Companies that don't pursue any strategy, they might have a plan, but it's not a strategy. A strategy needs to connect with both customers and, of course, employees. And it needs to make clear who you are, what you stand for, and most importantly, why people should choose you. If it doesn't do that, it's not really a strategy. So customer choice is really the litmus test of strategy, the ultimate test of strategy. Unless you can find a differentiating idea and get your organization behind it, there's no chance that customers will be able to tell who you are and what you stand for. And what then happens is, you fall into the worst trap in business today, which is to be seen as mediocre. When you're mediocre, the worst thing that can happen is that you go into obscurity, which means that you don't even exist. And of course, you can't sell people on things or on anything if they don't know that you exist. But also, from a psychological point of view, we notice what's new and different. We don't notice what is common, and what is common becomes boring. And so we also get into price fights because of this, and this is a huge problem. But also, let's explore why this is extra important right now, in this time of the world, where we have four billion people connected to the internet right now, and that's growing. And what that means is, that we all basically have the power to use the same means of production that the big companies have. I mean, if, this, that, if it's not true today, it's definitely going to be true tomorrow. I mean, access to cheap software, to automation, to robotics, access to a global, talented workforce. And so what we, or we, I should say, the big companies have been relying on for competitive advantage for all these years is becoming commoditized. And this is becoming a big problem. But for consumers, for people, for all of us, this is great news, of course, because we're genuinely living in the world of the customer, in the age of the customer. So we are more empowered. We all know this. We have more and better choice. We have less patience. We have higher expectations. And again, at the back end, at the organizations, we have a big problem to deal with. This might even be the end of competitive advantage as we know it. And the way we know it, is that we used to look to the back-end activities, sourcing, supply chain. We used to do everything we can just to obsess about products, when that is clearly not doing it. And by the way, I'm not saying that this is not going to be relevant tomorrow. It will for sure. What I'm saying is that it's not enough to differentiate. It's not enough to get chosen by customers. And so, the very simple step change we need to make, I believe, is to stop obsessing about these things and start obsessing about customers and start obsessing about making customers better. Now, let me explain a little bit that. Making customers better, to understand that, I think we need to look at 
the first law of business. It's not been written anywhere, but I think it is the first law of business, which says, whoever creates the most value will win. Kind of makes sense, right? What is important here, though, is that it's not a question about products. It's about a question of value. So we have to understand what value really is. And value is subjective. What is valuable to you might not be valuable to me, and so, for, and, and so forth. So that means we have to focus, and that's what these organizations are not doing. It. They're playing it safe, but safe is the new risky. And so, you have to focus, you have to differentiate. I think we all know that intuitively, but we're not doing it. Which leads me to different levels of organization. Uh, for, sorry, uh, to, to different levels of differentiation. You can be one choice among many, you could be one choice among few, or you could be the only choice. And being the only choice is no doubt the most powerful place in business. And so what that really means in simple terms is that you do something for customers that no one else does. It's really that simple. So we teamed up with the University of Delft recently, and we went out and surveyed this. We wanted to find out whether this is really true and how this works. And what we found out was that, sure enough, most of us have a brand in our lives that we consider the only choice. It's a brand that we wouldn't want to substitute for anything else. And we also found out that people are willing to pay an average of 69% more for their first choice, for their only choice, compared to the second choice. Now imagine what this does for your profitability, for your growth, for your revenue. This is really powerful. So of course, the question becomes, how do you become the only choice? And so the simple answer to that question is you have to start creating value beyond products and services. And I mean the, the, the features and the benefits around services and products. So, you might be familiar with this. Another MBF speaker, Simon Sinek and his golden circle. So, what this theory says is all companies know what they do, the products primarily. Many companies know how they do it, value proposition, process, but very few know why they do what they do, and people buy into the why increasingly. And, and the why are your beliefs, your values, your purpose. So this definitely holds very true, also in our research. But we took this to uh, another level. We started by putting the customer in the, in the center and asked ourselves, shouldn't we also be asking this question from the perspective of the customer? So not just, you know, what do we do, how do we do it, why do we do it? But shouldn't we also ask the same question from the customer's point of view? So we took Simon's model, we placed it on this chart here as in the form of a value chain, but then we also did something else. We took the customer side, which is on your right, and we asked, what do people want? Why do they want it? And, and of course, how do they want it? So why, what do you want? How do you want it? And why do you want it? And this is where it gets really interesting, because we can start understanding value, the complexities of value. And so we know that people have an outcome in mind. You want to achieve something. We always want to achieve something. And a product can do the job, or a service can do the job. But we can also create value in the how. And the how is really experience. So we can get to the same outcome with, uh, with just uh, another product, or we could create innovation in the experience realm, in the how. If you remember Netflix when they came, for example, they just innovated in the how space. They didn't really innovate in the what. The products stay the same. But the most important layer, which doesn't get talked about so much, is the why. Why do we want what we want? And if you can really understand the underlying themes behind what people, why, why people want what they want, you can really start tapping into higher forms of value creation and differentiation. So these, the greatest companies, the only choice brands, if you will, and the companies behind them, what they do is they don't only provide a great solution with a product to something you want to achieve. They take that further and they provide a great experience, and maybe you guessed it, they also they are able to align their why with your why. And what happens is it creates a bond. It creates something that you don't want 
to be without. I'm not talking about choice as a transaction, by the way. I'm talking about choice as a relationship. Because we know that people want to, we want to belong, we want to express our identity, we want to grow, and we want to transform. And this is the ultimate level of value creation. So, I'm going to leave you with a very powerful way to reframe your business. And I'm super excited about this because this is really where the magic can happen for you. So please try this out. I, the first thing you have to do is you have to get with this idea that I touched upon, that the product is never the innovation and the service is never the innovation. Innovation can only happen inside human beings. So it's a change that happens. We become better, we become happier, we become something else. That's real innovation. The rest is invention. And so first, when you really take this idea to heart, and then you work with the normal questions that you do at your company. For example, how can we sell more? What is our vision? How can we grow our business? Or how can we differentiate our business? And all you do is you substitute that we, or us, or I, and you exchange that for a customer. Try this. What is our vision for our customers? What do we want them to do? What do we want them to be? How do we want to change them? How can we differentiate our customer? We know customers want to stand out. Why not differentiate them? How can we grow our customer? And when you do this, you will realize that you are no longer in the product and the service business. Because what this does, essentially, it makes you realize that the purpose of business and the purpose of strategy is really to make a difference in people's lives. It's not to differentiate yourself from competition. It's to make a difference in people's lives. And when you do this and you have these ideas after you've done this reframing exercise, you will realize that you, will you were going to realign your company to serve customers in a different way. I really implore you to try this. This is super powerful stuff. And so finally, I think that in business today, we have two prevailing mindsets. And the one dominant one, unfortunately, is what we could call competing to win. So competition has been the driving force for very long. And we think about competition in terms of sports and warfare. But the problem is there's no customer there. They're only opponents. So we fight each other out. And the, the pitfall with that, as we've seen, as we lose our sense of focus, we lose our sense of morals even. You think about the emission scandals, or you think about other catastrophes, where we lose the focus of doing the right thing. But fortunately, there is this other view, and that is the view of humanity. And I believe we need to tap into the view of humanity. I think we really need to start understanding that caring for customers is the simplest, oldest idea, and that is really what we need to do. And so, 250 years of industrialization probably conditioned us to think about business in a certain way. We're always driving efficiencies, looking for, for cost savings, but we're forgetting that this is not going to do it any longer. But the good news is that this is the best time to be alive as a human being. I hope you agree with that. Yes, it's tough, but there are more opportunities for all of us. And the best thing is also, you don't have to invest in these expensive means of production anymore. They're available. They're commoditized anyway. All you need to do is you need to tap into your human faculties that we were all born with. Your capacity to empathize. Your capacity to change your perspective and see something that hasn't been done before. To use your intuition to guide you to use your imagination, the completely undervalued tool in business, to create something in your mind that you've never seen before, and then use that relentless will that we all have to drive execution and to drive change. That's all we need. That's where we create competitive advantage, from the inside, not from the external. So, tap into the magic that exists in you. If we all did that, imagine what could happen. And if we did that from the right place. So I believe I have actually solved that problem that's been bothering me for the past 20 years. I believe it's very simple. It takes a change in mindset, and it takes reframing the questions that we ask ourselves. And when you do that, you will see that you will want 
to reorganize the organization, that it's not about product, it's not about service, it's not even only about experience, but it's about content, it's about service, it's about growth and transformation. We are playing way too low. So customers are giving us a new mandate. They're asking us to give us more. They are bored. Only a few of us are able to provide something fresh and new and exciting. And that's the way that you tap into the most powerful strategy in business, which is to be the only choice. Thank you very much.